plastic neutral axis is unfortunately not well covered in most undergraduate mechanics classes. Uh, most of us can remember how to find the elastic neutral axis of shape. If we take, for instance, this is not to scale, obviously. If we take a shape made up of some four inch by quarter inch plates of A36 steel. Quarter inch here, quarter there. And similarly, quarter inch by four inch for all of this, for ourselves a coordinate system on there. And that'll just leave the quarter inch and four inch on there for us to remember. We can tell by symmetry right off the bat that the centroid or the elastic neutral axis is going to be smack in the middle. And for the plastic neutral axis, as long as all three of these plates are of the same material, that's also going to be true. Anytime that you have a symmetric shape, the plastic neutral axis and the elastic neutral axis will be in the same location so long as everything is made out of the same material. <clears throat> Finding the elastic neutral axis of this guy, we would take, basically we're trying to add up the areas of the entirety and find a location, a height in this case, that corresponds to the area of the entirety concentrated down to one point. So in this case, y bar e is equal to the sum of all of the heights of the midpoint of each area divided by sum of the area of the entirety. So again, this is the elastic neutral axis if we're trying to find well, if we're trying to find the centroid of this formally, and again we know that it's right at the center, but we would say y bar is equal to the height of the center of this bottom plate is going to be an eighth inch times quarter inch times four inches, which we know is one square inch, plus the center of this plate is going to be located at two and a quarter inches because we've got that quarter inch plate underneath there, times one square inch, the quarter by four, plus, and the top one will be at quarter inch plus four inches plus an eighth, so four and three eighths inches times one square inch. And the area of the hole, we're going to have one square inch plus one square inch plus one square inch. So we'll have 0.125 cubic inches plus 2.25 cubic inches, 4.375 cubic inches, divided by 3 square inches, y bar elastic, will occur at, this is 4.5, 6.75, 6.75, is cubed over 3 inches squared y prime e is equal to 2.25 inches. Similarly, if we want to find the plastic neutral axis, the plastic neutral axis is defined by having the same amount of plastic force above and below. So the difference here, if we take a look from the side, under elastic conditions, we're looking at a stress-strain distribution that looks like that under bending, where you've got some compression up there, some tension down there, 
and you've got triangular distribution. And we define failure as hitting yield here or here. Now that makes sense for some of your more brittle materials or things that you have a good sense of what the original stress state is in your shape. But if this is a hot rolled section, you've got all sorts of weird internal stresses to start out with. So you need to start out with some stress state that we don't know. The way that we get around that is we design with safety factors for the plastic state where we assume that this entire area is hitting FY and that's intention, that's compression. So the compressive force, the tensile force need to equal out Fy above times A above equals Fy below times A below. Now as long as this is, well, technically this would be your sum of each one of those. As long as the Fy's above and below are all the same, we can cross those out and ignore them. And this becomes sum of your area above is equal to the sum of your area below. There's not really an easy way to do that with just a generic equation here. We have to make assumptions. We need to assume that either the plastic neutral axis is in this bottom plate, in the middle plate, or in the top plate. Given that we already know the answer from symmetry on this one, we'll assume vertical plate holds P and A. We'll leave ourselves a checkbox here because we should always come back and check any assumptions that we make. So that gives us area above. We've got a quarter inch plate by one inch plus. We've got a four inch tall plate and we're starting a quarter of an inch up. So we'll say quarter inch by 4.25 inches minus y bar p is equal to a another quarter inch by one inch plate plus a quarter inch by in this case we'll have y bar p minus 0.25 inches so Simplifying a little bit, sorry, these are fours. We get one square inch plus a quarter inch, four and a quarter, minus y prime, equals one square inch plus quarter inch, so on and so forth. We can subtract off a square inch from each side and divide by a quarter inch, giving us 4.25 inches minus y bar p is equal to y bar p minus 0.25 inches. Bring that over here and that over there. 4.5 inches is equal to 2 y bar p. y bar p is equal to 2.25 inches equal. Now, we're not done. We've still got this assumption to check. We're saying that the vertical plate holds the plastic neutral axis. That means that 0 0.25 inches is less than or equal to y bar p is less than, an e less than or equal to 4.25 inches. And that does satisfy so our assumption was correct.
So again, the reason that this is hanging out in the exact same spot is symmetry and all one material. If we flip, wow, that bled through. If we flip to a new sheet, and this time we go for a T-shape, we're just going to use those same dimensions. And I'll leave off the bottom plate. And again, not to scale. This is way distorted. Four inches. Four inches. Quarter inch. So finding the elastic neutral axis. We've got the Y bar, oh, got to define our coordinate system. Y bar is equal to, we've got a quarter inch by four inch with the centroid located two inches up. And we've got a four inch by quarter inch with a centroid located four and an eighth up. And now we've got one square inch plus one square inch. Two cubic inches plus four and a quarter cubic inches divided by two square inches. That gives us six and a quarter divided by two. That happens at three and a sixteenth, which is about an inch down from the stem. For the plastic neutral axis, we again need to know that these are both A36 steel, or both whatever they are. So our FY. So again, because these are the same, we can cancel out the FYs. And we're going to assume that our plastic neutral axis is somewhere in this vertical leg again. And that's just informed by the fact that we found our elastic neutral axis in the leg. It's not going to be in the same place because we're not symmetrical here. But we will make the assumption that it is still somewhere in the stem. So we will assume that 0 is less than or equal to y bar p is less than or equal to 4 inches. Summing up our areas below, we'll have a quarter inch by y bar p is equal to 4 inches minus y bar p times a quarter inch plus quarter inch times 4 inches. That gives me 0.25 inches y bar p is equal to Distributing this through, we get one square inch minus quarter inch y bar p plus one square inch. Bring this over this way. We get that a half inch times y bar p is equal to 2 square inches. y bar p is equal to 4 inches. Again, checking our assumption, 0 less than or equal to y bar p. It's less than or equal to 4 inches, 4 inches checks that box and we're good. Now if we think about that, 
That's again a trivial answer. We know that right off the bat. We need to match the area above and below. Well, the only way to match the area above and below when you've got two plates is to plop it right at the junction. And our elastic neutral axis is down there. Again, we were only able to see this answer clearly because these are both the same material. So what happens if we go now to a new material? This time, we'll bring back our same I-beam from the start. Our little lopsided I-beam here, but we'll pretend. And this one is going to be grade 50 steel. The other two components will remain a 36. And we'll just state here that this is 3 quarter inch by 4 inch steel plates. Now we'll need to know not only the yield strengths of each one of these materials, but we'll also need to know the Young's modulus. So E A36 is equal to 29,000 KSI, as you may well know. Grade 30 is not technically a particular grade of steel, but grade 50. There's a variety of steel grades that could be grade 50. However, we know that steel is steel is steel in terms of the Young's modulus. So we're not going to have to do anything with the modular ratio here. As you may remember, if we were pretending that this was brass or something else, we would have to multiply or divide the width of it by this modular ratio. But since it's one, we don't care. However, the plot thickens when we get to the yield strengths. The yield, the yield strength of A36 is 36 KSI. The yield strength of grade 50 is 50 KSI. So we won't be able to just cross out our yields as before. Pulling back our initial solve here. Got too many sheets of paper kicking. We bring back our initial sheet here. The elastic neutral axis will be the same work because there's no modular ratio. If we had a modular ratio in there, if n was not 1, we would bring that in here so we could feasibly have an n on that bottom piece there, multiplying or dividing the width of that area. But that's not the case, our n is 1. So we will simply state that the E and A, y bar E, occurs at the mid-height, 2.25 inches. When it comes to the plastic neutral axis, Again, we've got our sum Fy above and our sum of Fy A below. We can't cross out those Fy's, so we'll need to work those all the way through here. I'm going to assume that we're still going to be somewhere in this vertical. So 0 0.25 inches less than or equal to y bar p less than or equal to 4.25 inches. With that assumption, our whole lower plate, my apologies, our whole lower plate will be in the below camp. So our above, we've got 36 KSI times 4 inches times a quarter inch plus 36 KSI 
times quarter inch times uh, we'll use that same convention from before 4.25 inches minus yp again that 4.25 inches really we could write 4 inches minus y bar p minus 0.25 in parentheses and carry that through. We're just saving a step. Our bottom plate is 50 ksi times 4 inches times a quarter inch. And our remainder of that middle plate is 36 ksi times quarter inch times y bar p running out of space simplifying that through we've got 36 ksi times one square inch we'll use nine kips per inch times 4.25 inches y bar p equal to 50 kips. We could go back here and call this 36 kips. 50 kips plus, again, 9 kips per inch times y bar p. And we'll distribute this through come up with some nasty looking numbers um, ah, this shouldn't be a quarter inch times y bar p it should be y bar p minus a quarter inch times there y bar p minus 0 0.25 inches all right so we'll subtract 50 kips from We'll subtract 36 kips. From both sides. I'm looking at my notes. I should just be thinking the problem through. To move those over here, and we'll subtract 9 kips per inch y bar p minus 0.25 inches from both sides. That will give us 9 kips per inch times. We've got a double negative here, so 4.5 inches minus 2 RP. is equal kips by 9 kips per inch we get 4.5 inches minus 2 y bar p is equal to 14 ninths we'll plug that in the calculator in a minute inches because our kips cancel it's 4.5 2y bar p is equal to 14 over 9 inches minus 4.5 inches divided by negative 2 y bar p is equal to 1.472 inches. Checking our assumption from above. 0 0.25 inches less than or equal to y bar p, less than or equal to 4.25 
inches that checks out our assumption was valid so sketching again one more time not proportionally A36 for both of those, grade 50 for these. Our elastic neutral axis occurs here at the centroid. However, this grade 50 plate has pulled that plastic neutral axis downwards. So instead of being at 2.25 inches, we're down here at 1.472 inches with our plastic neutral axis. Now if you wanted to find the actual moment, the plastic moment of this shape, you would take the center of this area times A36, so A above times Fy times the distance from the center of the upper to the center of the lower. Or a below Fy. Times that distance between the centroid or the center of A above and A below. So that would be taking all of this area, multiplying by 36 KSI, and then multiplying by the distance between. That would give you the plastic moment, which is used in steel design.